Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa wa So the next hadith is 259. Actually, um, no, uh, it's 252. 252 to 258. This chapter is titled as Warning for One Appropriating the Right of a Muslim by Taking a False Oath. The fire of hell is his chastisement. This is like if you go to court and you've, you, you've basically t- um, stole or usurped somebody's land and then he goes and uh, complains against you but you go to court and you say, and the judge asks you um, if this man doesn't have any title that to prove that this is his land, then uh, the, the judge would ask the person who is accused uh, to make an oath that this is his land. If he makes an oath that this is his land, this is what these hadith are talking about, although he's lying. He's trying to uh, steal somebody's land by using the false oath. This false oath which, um, through which the person uh, acquires somebody else's rights it's called Al-Yameen Al-Ghamus. Al-Yameen Al-Ghamus. Al-Ghamus means um, it, it is a cause for um, uh, Ghams means to plunge something into, into water. It's called uh, to plunge into the water which means it throws the person who uh, takes such an oath Daringly, he's, he's basically, he knows he's going to be punished for that. He knows it's not his land or not his right, even if something simple. Then, and he makes that oath, then he, as if he is throwing himself into the fire of hell. So, so number one, these hadith uh, have the same meaning. Uh, we'll read the first one, narrated on the authority of uh, Abu Umama, that the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may, peace, uh, may, may the peace of Allah be upon him, observed... May the peace of uh, may the peace be upon him uh, observed. Uh, he who appropriated the right of a Muslim by swearing a false oath, Allah would make hellfire necessary for him, and would declare paradise forbidden for him. A person said to the messenger, "O oh, oh Allah's messenger, even if it is something insignificant, he, the Holy Prophet, replied, yes, even if it is a twig of the arak tree." You know what they use for brushing the teeth? It's called qadibun min arak. Walau qadibun min arak. Even if it's a twig from that tree that he owns, even if you steal somebody's toothbrush and you swear that this is mine, this hadith would apply to that person. فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ this is the wording. Awjaba means uh, it is necessary for him to be admitted to the fire of hell. Um, means it is forbidden for him to go to Jannah. Now, scholars say that this applies if somebody steals uh, and appropriates a property of a Muslim or a non-Muslim even. So this applies to appropriation and uh, unlawful taking of anybody's property, a Muslim or non-Muslim. But the hadith says who appropriates the right of a Muslim. And that is because the messenger as the ruler, he was ruling Muslims. So this is like the ruler saying, if somebody takes the right of a citizen, because all the citizens underneath him were Muslims at the time. But scholars are in agreement that this hadith applies to everybody, Muslims and non-Muslims. You follow? Um, that's one thing. The other thing is that uh, it is necessary for him to be admitted to the fire, which means that um, this is what he deserves. Of course, there might be uh, the forgiveness of Allah uh, the, to pardon him. That may happen. But he um, is taking that kind of risk because the, his default position is to be, yeah, the, his worthy position is to be in the fire of hell. To be saved, that's a possibility. You follow? So because some people say, oh, Allah may forgive. Yes, Allah may forgive. We cannot deny that. Yes, he might um, be at one point forgiven by the person. But that's another possibility. Okay, but what this person, where this person is heading is the fire of hell. Unless he is 
rescued by the mercy of Allah or the forgiveness of that person and so, or so on, right? Or uh, if he, for instance, uh, uh, his good deeds, for instance, um, uh, outweigh his bad deeds. But even if that happens, um, the rights of people are to be uh, taken back and justice uh, will have to be, will have to take place. Remember the hadith we recited before that, uh, that uh, Allah says, it's hadith Qudsi, that no one of the people who are deserving paradise or Jannah, the gardens of uh, paradise, will be admitted there if a person who is destined to the fire has any right upon them. Like if they've stolen from somebody who is destined to the fire, you follow? Mm -hmm. So somebody who's evil to start with, but if they have stolen from an evil person or taken the right or wronged that person anyway, they still cannot be admitted to Jannah, to paradise, unless that right is taken back somehow. Okay, you follow? No. Uh, it may be taken from their deeds, uh, good deeds, or from his evil deeds be placed upon them, so they may be punished before going, or they may be, uh, their ranking in, the in, in paradise will be lessened because this man took from their good deeds or so on. You follow? Mm. Um, that's one thing. And paradise is forbidden uh, it is forbidden during, uh, just, this is a confirmation that th this is where he's going. He's going to the fire of hell and he cannot enter paradise while he is being, uh, while, while he's in this state until he fulfills the punishment in the fire of hell. So it doesn't mean that paradise is forbidden forever because if he is a Muslim, he is destined finally to go to paradise, right? After all, uh, after he pays for all his mistakes. He is destined to go to paradise. That's, that's a given from many multiple hadith, many other hadith, numerous ones, that indicate that eventually every Muslim will be destined to paradise. But uh, taking such risks may, uh, may lead to them uh, spending a long, long time in the fire of hell. And this is serious because uh, a person, if you ask him to put his hand on the fire of a stove for five minutes, he won't be able to. Right? And when the, when, when, and the fire of hell could be لَبِثِينَ فِيهَا أَحْقَابًا Decades. So it's not, not something simple. <clears throat> um, and then he says, even if it's something insignificant. Um, this, uh, there's another narration of this hadith, uh, but uh, it's the same wording. Uh, narrated, transmitted by another chain of narrators. Uh, uh, so this just, he mentions those other narrations to confirm that more than one person has heard this hadith. Uh, from the messenger, peace be upon him. Uh, also, it is narrated from uh, authority of Abdullah ibn Umar that the messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, uh, he who uh, perjured with a view to appropriating the property of a Muslim, and he in fact is a liar, would meet Allah in a state that he would be angry with him. This is another hadith which has the same meaning, but it's a different wording, that if somebody does this thing, makes an oath, false oath to appropriate somebody else's property, um, he would meet Allah, Allah wa huwa ghadban. This is the wording in Arabic. Allah wa huwa ghadban. When he meets Allah, Allah would be angry with him. You follow? Um, the narrator then said, there came Ash'ath ibn Qais and said to the people, what does Abu Abdul Rahman narrate to you. They replied, so and so. They, said, they mentioned to him the hadith. Upon this, he remarked, Abu Abdurrahman told the truth. He also confirmed that this is a saying of the messenger. He says, Abu Abdurrahman has told the truth. This command has been revealed in my case. He says, I was the witness of this hadith. It was actually revealed, this hadith or this uh, wording, of this statement of the Prophet was said for, uh, for something rela that relates to me. What is that thing? He said, this command has been revealed in my case. There was a piece of land in Yemen over which I and another person had a claim. I brought the dispute with him to the apostle of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, to decide. He, the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, said, can you produce an, an, an evidence that this is your property? Uh, so this man, uh, I think his name is Ash'ath ibn Qais, um, Messenger asked him because he said, this is my property. He said, okay, bring, me, bring any supporting evidence. I said, no, I don't have any evidence. The Holy Prophet observed, then the decision would be made on his oath. He has to make an oath now that this, his, 
This is his property. This is how it goes. Whoever makes a claim, uh, there's another statement with the pro- statement of the Prophet. He says, this is, they use this all the time. Um, it's a fundamental principle uh, in the judiciary system in Islam. Whoever makes a claim, he has to bring, he is required to provide the evidence. While the accused, if there's no evidence against him, material evidence, he can, he can uh, absolve himself by making an oath. By making an oath. So he said to him, uh, he, for him to make an oath, I said he would readily take an oath upon, because he felt that this man uh, wouldn't care. He, he's just going to take an oath and get away with it. Uh, he would readily take an oath. Upon this, the Messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, remarked, he who, what's this word? Perjured, P-E-R-G-U-R-E-D-E-D. Do you know this word? Perjured? Perjured. Perjured. What does it mean? Is it perjury? Ah, not to lie? Yeah. He who perjured, yes. Yeah, perjury. Yeah, perjured, yeah. He who perjured for appropriating the wealth of a Muslim, again, a Muslim or non-Muslim, because this is uh, how the scholars have explained it, and this is expected, uh, that the messenger, if he's talking to Muslims, that's what he, that's what he would say. Whereas he's a liar, would meet Allah while he would be angry with him. And then the verse was revealed. This verse was revealed. Uh, this verse was revealed. This verse is in Surah Al Imran. Those who barter and lie Allah's covenant uh, will be punished with their oath for, uh, for a small price. I mean, they, 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 they buy a small price by. Uh, breaking the Allah, breaking the oath, or something like this, or making an oath to to uh, uh, attain a small price. I mean, anything in this world would be considered a small price, even if he's going to. So when it says to make an oath to attain a small price, doesn't mean that you're allowed to make an oath to get something big. It just means that anything that you attain of this world is something insignificant compared to the consequences in the in the akhirah, right? To attain a small price. They sell Allah's covenant and their oaths which means they, they, they have no right for any um, uh, khalaq means any property in the akhirah. Khalaq means what you enjoy. Um, and it goes with this because why did he make an oath? To attain a property or attain enjoyment in this dunya. So Allah is saying to them you take it, you take it here, you lose it there. Exactly. And then not only that, Allah, and Allah will not talk to them. This is when somebody is angry, you abstain from talking to them, uh, which means you'll get punished, and I will not hear your screams or your excuses. This is not. You can't make any excuse. Allah will not even look at them. And Allah will not look at them يوم القيامة ولا يزكيهم means Allah will not uh, uh, have mercy on them ولهم عذاب أليم and for them uh, is deserved a, a severe chastisement. So the ayah goes exactly with the hadith لقي الله عليه الضبان وجبت له النار وحرمت عليه الجنة نار is inevitable fire is inevitable uh, paradise is uh, forbidden Allah is angry with them. This is a series of hadiths. It's all to the same meaning. Um, so the following hadith also has the same meaning. Nothing, nothing to add. Uh, 256. Uh, then the messenger in support of this. Uh, he recited the verse. Um, uh, support. He replied negative. And then uh, uh, there's no other. Uh, and to back and Yeah. Um, in, in 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 one other hadith, the messenger reminded the person before making an oath that this is a consequence. Before you make an oath, don't take it lightly. This is what's going to happen if your oath was was uh, uh, was not uh, uh, was to steal this other person's land. Okay, I think we we can stop here. This basically is the meaning of this sequence of hadith. Now, thank you.